Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your favorite portal for online education. We will again take a new question on the project completion time, on the project management, and this time we will see how to calculate in addition to what we saw in the last class we will also see how to calculate the float of the activities so here is a question a new question with uh, a total of 13 activities and as in the previous case you have the jobs given here the immediate predecessors are mentioned and the timings here so the first thing is we will draw the network flow diagram then we will calculate the project completion time and finally we will determine the critical activities or the critical path which we did in the last class so I think uh, just to consolidate your understanding and to test to check whether you've got things right you can pause me here for a while and do what we did in the last class that is draw the project uh, the, draw the uh, network diagram calculate the flow time that is the project completion time and also determine the critical path okay so pause me here do and then we will proceed alright so let's do together now let's first draw the project the, the f uh, network flow diagram so here we have got three, uh, 13 activities starting from A up to M their predecessors given and their duration so let's see what are the activities we can start straight away at time 0 it is activity A G and J so at the first node 1 we can start off with activity A activity G and activity I so we have three activities let's diversify them let's say activity A is here six days to complete then we have is activity G G which takes just two days to complete and finally activity J J which takes nine mm, 13 days to complete okay next we have uh, let's again go back here and see what are the activities which follows A that is B do we have any more yeah we have T D follows A and we also have K so once again we have got three activities which follows A so let's say here at this let me call this as node 2 activity A follows three activities three activities follows A and they are uh, let me draw them here uh, we'll have to be a bit tactical say this is activity uh, say D then we have activity say B and we have activity say K so this is K and K takes nine days to complete uh, this is B and your B takes just four days to complete and this is your activity um, K sorry not K, K we have already marked so this is activity D D and D takes two days to complete okay and then let's see what are the activities following these two so when we go here we see let's check for G first G H follows G okay H follows G anymore no but then we see here that activity I follows both J and H this is J here and this is H we will be drawing here now this indicates this gives an indication that both these activities J and H should end at the same node therefore uh, maybe we'll have, I'll have to extend it slightly here okay and then uh, a node from here and this is our new activity which is my activity um, H and activity H takes 10 days to complete these both are merged now at one node 
let me give the node uh, numbering to these nodes uh, 1 2 let me call this as 3 and call this as 4 now one thing which you need to keep in mind while numbering the node is that always give a higher number at the head of an activity and a smaller number at the tail say if I would have interchanged these two numbers it would really doesn't matter 3 here and 2 here would again be the same but I cannot write 3 here and 4 here because this is the head of activity H and this is the tail okay if you just follow this the rest is not a problem you can give the numbers fine so that was my activity H so H is also done next next let's see what are the activities left out we have activity C and C follows B B is here so let's go to this activity C follows B once again let me let me check if there is uh, anything following C yeah activity L follows C and activity L also fa follows K that means once again it's a similar situation and um, uh, the C and K should end at the same node they should merge therefore I'll have to merge C which starts after B to activity K here okay so I have one two three four let me give this as five this as six this is my activity uh, C and C takes seven days to complete okay what is next next is D D follows E do we have E anywhere E just one to follow E so no problem that means we have it here mm. D follows E that is here we have E and E takes four days to complete okay let me give the this as let's call this as node number seven and then after E we have F F follows E what follows F well there is nothing which follows F now that means F is the activity which will end at the last node so we can wait for a while uh, and go to I I we have already done no I follows J and H where is my J this is J this is H so I has to come from here anything following I just have a look yeah so I once again I has uh, M as its uh, its follower but again M also follows L now where is L L is here following C and K that means this uh, from this point this give me a, gives me an indication that I and the activity emerging from here that is L also will have to merge so slightly tilting it downwards like this and an activity from here merge them together at this node okay J and H this is I and I take six days to complete C and K is L following and um, taking three days to complete now I have come up to seven let me give this as eight this as nine and then finally what are we left out with I is done okay L is also done we are just left out with F and we also all know that F is the last activity and we are left out with M M follows I and L that is both of these activities so M has to start from here since nothing follows M M is also the last uh, will also end at the last node therefore both F and M ends at the last node so we can you know mark them here F and M to the last one call this as 10 this is M this is F F takes a total of uh, 10 days to complete and M takes 5 days to complete so with that we have completed our um, network flow diagram and now we are ready to calculate the project uh, completion time or the flow time so let's calculate the flow time here now to calculate the flow time we mark the earliest and the latest timings at each of the nodes like the previous one so let's start from here the first one starting at zero moving in this direction in the first activity which is activity A which takes six days to complete so at this node I will be at the end of sixth day okay 
Moving in this direction again since there is just one activity to do which takes two days of time I'll be here at the end of the second day and this direction now here when we look at this there are two uh, activities or there are two paths which leads to node 4 okay if I come through this path it will be I'll be ending on the 13th day and if I come through this path it will be 10 plus 2 12 days so now which of these two are we to choose exactly we will be choosing 13 why because in the forward pass method let me write it here forward pass method we select the maximum of all the pass the maximum time so that is 13 so here we will be at the end of the 13th day okay coming to this node node 5 it will be 6 plus 4 days to complete this activity we will be here at the end of 10th day at node 7 mm, it will be 6 plus 2 so we will be here on the 8th day since there's just one path so it's not a complication but then coming to node 6 once again we have got two paths ending up here one path takes 6 plus 9 15 days to complete and another path takes 10 plus 7 17 days to complete exactly we will calc we will select 17 so the comp completion time here is 17 then here at node 8 it's straightforward it is 8 plus 4 12 and then again at 9 we have to choose between two let's see which is the one suitable here it is 13 plus 6 19 or 17 plus 3 20 obviously we will select 20 being the maximum of both at the last one end node again we have two path 1 making it 10 plus 12 22 another making it as 20 plus 5 25 being larger I select 25 and now that is my flow time or project completion time is 25 days okay now in the backward path again I take the same that is the completion time here as my latest completion time as well and I move backward there is just one path here so it will be 25 minus 5 20 when we move this way it's again there is just one path leading to this so it will be 25 minus 10 uh, is it 10 25 minus 10 yeah 15 okay this way also we have just one path so it will be 15 minus 4 11 and if we go this way again there is just one so it will be 20 minus 3 is 17 going backward here it will be 20 minus 6 14 uh, at note 5 it will be 17 minus 7 which is 10 at node 2 at node 2 again we have got three paths coming backward so let's see if we go back from through this path it will be uh, 11 minus 2 is 9 let me write it here 11 minus 2 is 9 or if we go through this path it will be 10 minus 4 which is 6 and if we go through this path it's going to be 17 minus 9 which is 8 so now once again which of these three are we going to choose for the latest time at this node is it the maximum no it's the minimum therefore we will say take 6 yeah remember that in the backward pass method backward pass I told you that we take the minimum of the timings of all the timings so it's 6 coming backward here is 14 minus 10 is 4 since there's just one path no confusion and finally we just left out with the first one again there are three parts let's see which of the three uh, will make it here so it is 14 minus 13 is 1 or it's 4 minus 2 is 2 or it's 6 minus 6 is 0 obviously we will select 0 being the minimum so we have got the project completion time we have done the both, both the forward and the backward passes now we are ready to determine the critical path so let's check which are the nodes at which the earliest and the latest timings are the same so it is the first one that is here 
the earliest and the latest timings are the same so this node is on the critical path node 2 is on the critical path what about node 7 no node 5 is on the critical path yeah node 6 is also on the critical path node 9 is on the critical path and finally node 10 okay and if we have to mark the uh, activities then it's the activity A which is on the critical path let me make it dark then activity B activity C okay activity L and finally activity M so let me write that here critical path in terms of activities it is A B C L and M and in terms of the nodes my critical path is from 1 to 2 to 5 to 6 to 9 and 10 so now one thing which you will have to uh, which is to be noted here is that in spite of both of these nodes 2 and 6 being on the critical path I did not mark my activity 6 as a critical activity why well because uh, I did not get these uh, the earliest and the latest timings at this node 17 through this activity K how see we have 6 here if I add 9 to 6 I end up with 15 whereas I have, I have the earliest time as 17 here therefore it's actually not through K but it is through B and C that we got these numbers so you need to be careful regarding this because sometimes you may have a situation where both the nodes at the beginning and node at the end may be on the critical path but still the activity will not be okay so that was something to take a note of well so this was what we did uh, in the last class so this was the revision now let's move on move further and see how to calculate the float timings okay there are three floats we have the total float we have the total float we have the free float and we have the independent float uh, before I explain you the floats let me just uh, make you familiar uh, with the nomenclature let's say that we have an activity say activity X and this activity X is between node I and node J okay so the duration the time taken to complete this activity will be given by T I J the time taken to move from node I to node J okay and my earliest and the latest times at these nodes will be this will be the earliest time at node I and this will be the latest time at node I similarly this will be the earliest time at node J and the latest time at node J in other words we can say that this represents the earliest start and this represents the latest start of activity X and this represents the earliest finish and the latest finish respectively of activity X okay in terms of I and J if I want to write these timings see these are nothing but the timings which we have marked on our diagram okay and we will actually be making use of these to calculate our float and that is why I wanted you to be very clear about the nomenclature so in terms of I and J if I would like to write I would call this as EI this as LI and this as EJ and LJ clear now one more thing is that always your J will be greater than I that we have already seen when I told you how to uh, work about how to give the, n uh, the the numbers of the nodes okay so be very clear about this thing okay because we will be making use of this while calculating our float 
Now let's see what are the formula for the floats. The total float is actually the difference between the latest time here that is LJ okay LJ minus EI that is this so it is LJ minus EI minus TIJ for example if we take say activity J if I have to calculate the total float of this activity it will be 14 minus 0 this 0 okay minus 13 so it will be 14 minus 0 is 14 minus 13 is 1 okay so that is 1 for activity J this is total float similarly uh, for free float free float how do we calculate free float in free float we take the earliest completion time that is EJ and minus EI EJ minus EI so it is EJ minus EI minus TIJ okay so if I have to f calculate the earliest uh, sorry free float of the activity J it will be 13 this 13 minus 0 minus 13 so 13 minus 0 minus 13 is 0 okay clear and now finally the independent float so just uh, see this uh, when you have uh, the total float we take the second one here we take the first one here that is total okay when we take the free float we take the first one here and the first one here okay and finally the independent float is given by e j minus l i l i minus t i j okay e uh, now if we calculate that for the activity here it will be 13 minus this 0 this time so 13 minus 0 minus 13 is again 0 okay so that is how we calculate the floats and these are the formula be very clear about it go uh, back once again and see how I have defined the nomenclature and this is how you're going to use it and one more point before we proceed uh, to the Excel sheet to calculate our floats uh, one more point which I would like to tell here is that always your total float will be greater than or equal to your free float your total uh, your free float will never exceed total float in other words similarly your independent float will always be less than your free float so this will be the highest followed by free float and this this will be the lowest okay sometimes even your free independent float uh, could be negative yeah but we don't write times in negative therefore what we write is straight away zero clear about it alright so now now let's proceed and let's go to the Excel sheet let's take the question as we have and arrange the activities as per the order of the diagram which we had here okay so first we have taken activity A I have what I have done is activity A I have written the events as 1 to 2 okay it starts from 1 to 2 next I have taken activity G because that is also starting at time 0 okay from 1 to 3 and then activity J from 1 to 4 and the duration uh, mentioned here this duration is nothing but the TIJ let me write that here mm. TIJ okay so here we are ready now to calculate the floats uh, before going into the floats let's calculate the earliest and latest times of the activities although we have it here in the diagram and we will of course be using the diagram uh, to uh, calculate the floats as well but just you know to make things simpler and uh, clear let's put them over here so activity A if we look at activity A the early I mean uh, the start time of activity A is 0 and the finish time we know that it takes total of six days is six similarly activity J is also from 0 to 2 activity J is from 0 to 13 okay B 
uh, well before going into going further let me just see see when I go to activity A let's have a look at the diagram when we go to activity A I started at, at, at 0 finished it at 6 right and I uh, if, if I take the latest to calculate the latest always go backward in the activity so I completed the latest completion time here is 6 and the latest start time is 0 so it is uh, 6 minus the duration that is 6 minus 6 is 0 in the same way if we go to G G the earliest start here we see is at 0 earliest finish is at 2 latest finish is 4 and then latest start would be 4 minus 2 which is 0 so earliest start is 0 to 2 and latest finish is 4 Okay, that is what is given and it is uh, start would be 4 minus 2 is 2 okay uh, or maybe we can put a formula here uh, let's say it will be finish minus mm, the time okay and if we uh, if we just write and similarly here it will be the start plus the timing okay so now we can just drag uh, both of these now be very careful see what I did was in the earliest to calculate the earliest times I just uh, gave the timings the, of the start or uh, gave the start timing from the diagram whereas in the latest times I took the finish time from the diagram and I'm giving here the rest I'm just subtracting in for in case of latest I subtracted the duration subtracted the duration from here and for start the, for the earliest I added the duration to the start time okay so be very clear about it and we have already given the formula so let's check for one for these two and see if it's coming correct or not yeah uh, well this is yeah of course it's 13 now because so what is the latest finish time of J latest finish time of J is 14 right so put this as 14 yeah so it's 14 now for the remaining ones let's first give the start timing so what is the earliest start time of B B is here the earliest start time is 6 6 and K mm, let me first drag this so that you know we keep simultaneously we give the value we get the values here also okay k what is the earliest start time where is k k is here the earliest start time again is 6 so it is 6 here mm. then d the earliest start time is again 6 because all the three start at the same time next is h mm. h is uh, earliest start time let's have a look here is 2 h is 2 then i Mm, I the earliest start time is 13 uh, C the earliest start time uh, where is C yeah the earliest start time is 10 and then L L the earliest start time is 17 E the earliest start time is we'll have to go down and see E is 8 F is 12 E is 8 F is 12 and M M earliest time is 20 okay so these were the earliest times and we got the finish times how did I calculate the finish times earliest time plus the time taken to complete that is the duration now let's calculate the latest times so for latest time we go backwards so we will take the finish times first so first uh, B let's take activity B the latest finish time of activity B is 10 so here we have is 10 okay and let's go quickly uh, after B we have is K K the latest time is 17 yeah here uh, where is K here K is 17 then we have is C also is 17 C is here let me do that 17 D 
d is 11 okay d is 11 h h is 14 mm, h is 14 i is 20 h is 14 i is 20 l uh, l is again 20 e e is mm, latest finish time is 15 and f uh, the latest time is 25 and so is the case with m so now we have got the earliest and the latest start and the finish times all of uh, all of these activities when do you need it do we really need this for the floats no not exactly because floats we can straight away calculate from the, mm, the diagram this is just the consolidation of what we did in the diagram okay now finally let's come to the floats to start with let's take the activity a go back to the diagram here is activity a as I said if you just go through this be very careful see if you start calculating the floats from here sometimes you may not get it correct that is why I always say that take it from the diagram so here the latest time at the end node is 6 the earliest at 1 is 0 so it is 6 minus 0 minus 6 which is uh, uh, is 0 okay now once your total float is 0 we know that my free float is always going to be less than 0 independent float is also going to be less than or equal to 0 we are not allowed to write a negative number for times therefore quite obviously the other two will also be 0 for sure okay let's go to the next one activity G at G if I have to calculate the total float it will be 4 minus 0 minus 2 which is going to be 2 okay what about free float let's see free float will be 2 minus 0 minus 2 which is 0 and independent since free is 0 independent will also be 0 coming to J activity J is here it will be 14 we have already calculated for J we have seen that it is 1 so 1 and for J I think we have even calculated the free and independent floats they are 0 respectively okay now coming to B activity B once again is uh, here B the latest time here is uh, 10 right so it will be 10 minus 6 minus 4 so 10 minus 6 is 4 minus 4 is 2 so at no just a minute uh, at B the latest time here is 10 sorry 10 minus 6 is 4 minus 4 is 0 so it is 0 once this is 0 the remaining two are also going to be 0 K activity K is here at the end it is 17 so it will be 17 minus 6 minus 9 which is 2 2 next free float free float is 17 this 17 minus this 6 minus 9 so once again it is 2 now and then we have the independent float independent float we take again this 17 minus this 6 minus 9 oh that also happens to be 2 fine so just just view this once again I think uh, I'll have to make this a uh, bit clear see we have the completion time here the latest completion time at this node see if, if we go as per the thing late uh, we take this so it is 17 minus 6 minus 9 and since both of these are the same so all the three are going to be the same here all the three floats next going to D activity D we have it here activity D it is 11 minus 6 minus 2 so 11 minus 8 is 3 that is my uh, total float coming to free float it will be 8 minus 6 minus 2 so 8 minus 8 is 0 since this is 0 the next will also be 0 activity H and your activity H is here will be 14 
minus 2 minus 10 so it is 14 minus 12 is 2 and then free float will be 13 minus 2 minus 10 so 13 minus 12 is 1 and independent float will be 13 minus 4 minus 10 so it is 13 minus 14 which is minus 1 so we've got a case of minus also here but as I said we are not allowed to take negative numbers for timings therefore free flo independent float will be 0 here coming to activity I represented by this arrow it's 20 the total float is 20 minus 13 minus 6 which is 1 free float is this 20 minus 13 minus 6 again it is 20 minus 13 minus 6 is again 1 and independent float is 20 minus 14 here minus 6 which is 20 minus 20 and it is 0 coming to activity C which is represented by this arrow here it is 17 minus 10 minus 7 which is 0 once total floor is 0 we know that all the remaining also will be 0 going to activity L here again it is 20 minus 17 minus 3 again 0 so once total is 0 we will have all the 3 as 0 uh, E activity E is here and it will be 15 minus 8 minus 4 so it's 15 minus 12 which is 3 so that is the uh, total float free float will be 12 yeah 12 minus 8 minus 4 so it will be 12 minus 12 0 while well, next is also 0 and F activity F is here which will be 25 minus 12 minus 10 so 25 minus 22 is 3 once again free float will be 25 minus 12 minus 10 which is again 22 25 minus 22 is also 3 and independent float will be 25 minus 15 minus 10 which is 0 okay and then the last activity M which is here will be 25 minus 20 minus 5 which is 20, 25 minus 25 and it's 0 once total is 0 we are happy free and independent are also 0 so we are done with the calculation of the floats now points to note here is that there are certain activities which has got all the three total float free float and independent float as zero for instance that is the case with activity A right find out all those activities which are you know having all the three floats as zero so it is your this one going further down once I mean we just look at the total float and if we happen to find it as zero we know for sure that the other two will also be zero same is the case here so we mark these three and now let's see what are these activities these are activities A B C L and M yeah just mark them with a bright color I know bright students love bright colors well so it is activity A B C L and M have you heard of these together anywhere it's A B C L and M oh these are my critical activities so this is again a point to note that your critical activities will always have all the floats as zero and that is why they are called critical they are critical they have got no free time in between you just can't afford to delay these activities by any means that's why we call also call them as bottleneck activities activities which are to be taken care of which has to be given extra consideration yeah any delay in these activities will delay your completion time 
Well, so what we learn from here is that you really don't need to calculate the floats of the critical activities. Well, you might be smiling that I should have actually shortened this by eliminating these five and just calculating the other floats. True. But since this was the first question, mm, I did for all of these. You can also do it and it will actually help you check the correctness of your problem. Well, so that is all we have in today's class. We will again take another example sometimes later.